Hello, I'm Herman Stern. I'm the CEO of Obermott and I created the Obermott stock investing method. The other day we had a stock roundtable on Zoom. And that's actually now my most favorite method of evaluating what stock I want to buy. On uh, June 4th, the birthday of my brother, by the way, we had a session with uh, Danny from Germany and Veronique from London. And we discussed first how strange the markets are, you know, how enthusiastic the markets are. And we didn't really believe that this was very rational. So I started the discussion actually with the, with the opinion that I would like to sell some stocks. I would actually like to exit the stocks. And, and then actually we started to discuss, you know, what they are doing. And it was so surprising that the stock ideas that Veronique from London had, which was Aviva and Schwab in the US, and also Donny from Germany, which was Allianz, you know, an insurance company that was really, that today is really cheap compared to others. And he's also interested in, in Intel and in um, Hewlett Packard, HP in the States, both companies that are really, really cheap. And when I stopped the video conference, uh, our stock roundtable discussion on stocks, I felt I really wanted to buy these stocks. It was, it was amazing. And I uh, realized that this is actually now my most favorite way to purchase stock, you know, and that's, where I do it is where I'm actually doing this. This is my studio. You see here the green screen behind me. I use this so that, you know, not everybody sees my apartment. And the good thing about the green screen is you can put all kinds of funny backgrounds behind you. And, and then when you do actually a non-funny background, a, a rather boring background, then people listen to you because they only see you and they're not looking around your room. Well, what you have out there, which is something that, that really takes away your attention from the, the real issue. So I sit in front of my computer here and I discuss the stocks with whoever is present. And normally these are people that are really interesting and they typically provide ideas that are worth looking at. So when I had this stock discussion on June 4th, uh, where I you know, entered with the conviction that I wanted to sell stocks, you know, I walked away from that hour, from that hour of discussing stocks thinking, I should actually buy five or six stocks because I think they're really interesting. And I realized that this is actually now my most favorite way of picking stocks. I started, you know, I started with Obermott about 10 years ago. I started to develop the stock research method after the credit crisis because I didn't want to be in companies anymore that I didn't believe in. I wanted to be in stocks that, that I trusted. And to identify those stocks is actually not that that easy because the companies that are in the press, you know, that are recommended as good stocks are typically the companies that are already expensive. They typically have gone up, you know, over time. And that's why, you know, journalists and analysts feel safe recommending them. But that doesn't help you at all because these are just stocks that are expensive. Everybody knows about them and, you know, buying them now is, is maybe buying them at the peak. What is much more interesting is finding neglected stocks. And for that, you know, 10 years ago, I created the value rank. The value rank that uses very simple economic methods to relate the size of a company to the price of the company. So it's these two things, you know, how big is the company? How big is the price? Is it higher or lower or average, you know? And depending on how low it is, it gets, you know, a good value rank. You know, if you have a company that has a low value rank, it means basically that this company is cheap compared to its size. So nowadays, when I filter stocks for companies that I want to invest in, I go for the ones that are cheap compared to the size. And typically, what I find there is a lot of stocks that are not only neglected, but in a very difficult situation. But sometimes you find stocks that are not in a difficult situation, they're still neglected and they're actually, for that reason, a good buy. And the stocks that, you know, came up in that stock round table a couple of days ago uh, were all really interesting. 
You know, it started with Aviva in the UK that, you know, Veronique recommended, Allianz and AXA that uh, Danny bought in Germany. And I looked at these three companies, they all had good value ranks from Overmatt. That means they are cheap compared to its size. And I thought, you know, we probably need insurance in the future too. Um, and if you need insurance, these companies are going to make a return. As a matter of fact, right now, because of the pandemic, insurance companies are are maybe neglected because people think they have a lot of liability. But actually difficult times where risk is perceived to be high is good for insurance companies because they can charge much higher premiums. So whenever you have a situation where it looks really bad and the risks are really high, insurance insurances are companies that are going to profit about you know, from that in the future. And if they had liabilities in the past from the past if they have liabilities from the past typically the market knows about it and prices that those liabilities already into the stock price so you don't have to worry about that that much so i think insurance companies right now is an interesting place to put your money and if you look at the other stocks that came up during the stock roundtable it's um, technology stocks like hewlett packard and intel are stocks that have been neglected for some reason. People probably liked more to purchase Twitter, Facebook, and Google, and maybe Apple. But you know, Hewlett Packard and Intel are American companies that are that, that produce important technology technologies. And I think right now is a time where technology moves a little bit back to the home, to the home uh, ground, because that's where you feel safer when your technology comes from a place you know and, and you know the people that produce it and it's within the legislation that you control, you feel safer buying technology from them. So I think these technology companies actually have a good future. Sounds really interesting. And then the last, the last um, uh, stocks, uh, let me check what, what was also there that sounded really good. <laughs> yeah, the last one was Schwab uh, in the US, a broker. Schwab seems to have problems operationally. Veronica wasn't that happy with how they treated her as a customer. But Schwab is uh, one of the most successful online brokers. And I think in the future, you know, money will move away from large institutions and back more to the people. That's what we are doing. You know, we do stock self-investing. Do it yourself. This is what we do at Overmont. So I really believe in that model. I believe in the future of that model. I think it makes a lot of sense to pick stocks as an individual and keep them for a long time. Because as you saw, as, as you saw exactly now with me, when there is a difficult market, you tend not to sell if you picked all the stocks yourself. And if you don't, pick all, uh, if you don't sell in a downturn, then you typically have a better return than those people that decide to exit when the markets drop and enter when they go back up. Something that has been researched over and over. People are not really good at timing the market. As a matter of fact, when people, you know, those people that, that try to time the market, that are buying stocks, holding them for short periods, going out of the markets when something looks bad, going back into the markets when they feel safe, these people lose a lot of returns on the, on, on the way. First, they have transaction costs, but even worse, they're missing out on dividends, they're missing out on the early recovery of the market, and that all uh, results in a much worse uh, return on, your, on their portfolios. So what, I do, what I've done now is, first of all, my portfolio prevented me from selling anything uh, that, that right now, that I've, because I found all the stocks really valuable, I didn't want to sell them really. But what I've decided then to do was I decided to wait with my investment. So I have a couple of stocks from that stock round table and I thought these are really good stocks. And I decided, you know what, if I wait one or two months, you know, I'm not going to lose that much, but at least they're going to feel more comfortable investing because right now I just think we're all way too optimistic. And in two months from now, maybe we are more realistic and that might be a better time to go back into the markets. I'm always careful when everybody is really enthusiastic. And that's, that's really right now a situation where I think people are too enthusiastic. No question about that. For me, at least. Of course, this is not a maturity opinion. So when you hear me saying this, is I'm actually going against the maturity, maturity opinion. The maturity opinion 
is always reflected in the markets. So when the markets are very positive, as they are right now, you cannot blame the markets, you have to blame the people. It's people that make these decisions. So we, as people, are too optimistic right now, I think, for how the world is going to behave in the future. And it's reflected in the markets, and that's reflected in high prices for uh, stocks and, and other assets. So, when I started Overmod, I you know, wanted to um, decide how I could develop a system that it makes it easy for me to decide when to buy stocks. And first we had top 10 lists that I sent out to people. You, you get the top 10 lists probably on a regular basis on your email. Then I decided I want to have a custom top 10 list based on where you actually are. If you're a Swiss investor, if you're a German investor, if you're a UK investor, you are looking at different stocks. If you're a US investor, you probably invest mostly in the US. So I decided based on where you are, I'm going to um, give you custom top 10 lists every month so that whenever you get a custom top 10 list, you can start to invest. Then I realized, uh, you know, quite often it happens that I actually want to buy and the last custom top 10 list is already two weeks old and I need to find stocks. And for that reason, I created the filter and now it's very convenient. You can, you know, go by industry and you go by, can go by region. You can, you know, look at large companies only, for instance, if you want to. And that's, that's a really good way of, of selecting companies that, are, that you're interested in. And I, I've, been, I've done that. Now for the stock round table, I've selected companies based on those criteria. But I realized that it's actually a lot more interesting to talk to people about stocks as we do now on these web conferences. It's an investment of only one hour. You can discuss the stocks, you can raise all your objections, you hear what other people say, and you know, it's actually much easier to make up your mind if you want to be invested in that stock or not. And as a matter of fact, it's actually a little bit dangerous because you might be interested in too many stocks. You know, it, for me, it was six stocks that I found interesting that happened to be uh, called just during that one hour we spoke together. And I think it's going to get worse. We'll find really interesting stocks in that one hour that I'm now going to regularly actually have. I'm going to have these stock discussions on a monthly basis, you know, one in German, one in English. And I think that's going to help us uh, reduce the time we need to find interesting stocks dramatically. So that's how I pick my stocks, how I do my investment process. And I wish you a lot of success with yours. Thank you.